saying things like, it's like, it's perfect. Cause I, my bike has no quality and your bike has no suspension. <laughs> <laughs> Second name? Weissel. Weissel. Charlie Weissel. Weissel. Yeah. Tra- traveling chopper. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on, mate. I really, really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I, uh, for anybody that doesn't follow your Instagram, you're basically, you basically just travel the world on your exceptionally long chopper. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I just got off the road. I guess it's been about four months now. Still kind of feels like yesterday, but. Shit. I gotta like remind myself. I'm like, oh yeah, last summer I was like <laughs> over here and doing this. <laughs> so, so where where were you last? Uh, last place I was at was Mexico, cool. and that's where I that's where I left four months ago because I had shipped my bike uh, from Far East Russia to Mexico, and so I ended up over there for about a month waiting for cool. it. Shit. So it was kind of uh, yeah. I, know, okay, I, I thought yes. I was gonna be there for like a week. That makes sense from your post. From this end, it looks like you're you're basically doing like a, a long way round on a chopper. Like that's you've... pretty much what it was. Yeah, set. yeah, that's exactly what it was. Yeah. So can you? I mean, start start from the beginning. How how did how did that come about? Because I mean, how have you you've traveled two hundred sixty five thousand miles on this chop? Correct. Yeah. That's fuck. Okay. So I won't interrupt. Start from the beginning, <laughs> and uh... yeah. Um... So the whole idea to basically do a lap around the globe was kind of last minute. It wasn't really like something that I've been planning for years and years. Um, my wife and I had actually been planning on doing a one year long trip, starting from home and doing South America. Cool. We're going go to go all the way down to Ushuaia and back. Um, and uh, she's in the military. Uh, so she got deployed like not long, just a few months before we were supposed to leave on that trip. Oh shit. And um, yeah, so she got shipped off to Kuwait and spent wow. a year there. And uh, you know, at that point in time, it's like I had just sold my business and basically retired. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I wasn't working and all of a sudden this big trip that we had planned just basically dissolved within like yeah. a few days. Wow. Um, so then it was like, well, damn, now what, you know? Uh, and for a minute, I was like, ah, I could go back to work. And I was like, I, I, I left that for a reason. Like, I really don't want to do that. Yeah. You know? What was it you were doing? And, uh, electrical work. Okay, cool. Electrician. And uh, so, and I had done that for 20-something years. And uh, so, you know, she just looks at me and she's super cool. You know, she's like, I don't know. Just go travel for a year. Do whatever you want. I don't care. Like, <laughs> all right. Like, I can't handle that. No problem. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I wasn't expecting anything different. You know, yeah. that's how she is. And that's kind of how yeah. the way her and I operate together. It's like, go, you go do whatever you want. It doesn't bother me. Awesome. If it's something I'm interested in doing, I'll join and vice versa. Yeah. And uh, so we had, uh, I had for the longest time, for years, I had had the Trans-Siberian Highway across Russia on my radar as something I wanted to do, like the longest road in the world, you know? It's like, yeah, you know, totally. Like, that's kind of one of the ultimates, right? Yep. And uh, she has always had more interest in crossing Russia by train okay. and not so much on a motorcycle. Mm-hmm. And I'm kind of the opposite. I'm like, I want to do it on a bike. Yep. And uh, so I kind of started, so I put that on the radar of like, okay, let's figure out what what it's going to take to make that happen. And so I kind of started looking at the logistics and, and the best place to start it and everything else. And man, within like a few days, I realized I'm like, man, if I'm going to do that, I might like, I could easily turn this into an around the world ride. Shit. Cause that, that road alone is like a third of the way around the world. Yeah. I'm like, I just, tack on a coast to coast across the U S which I've already done before do that again. And then, uh, ship the bike to Western Europe and start there. And by the time I get to Magadan, far East Russia, I'm like, that'll be that. Ugh. So it just kind of, kind of evolved yeah. really quick. Like, like literally like almost overnight. It just went like, where am I going to fuck it? I'm going around the world. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. 
So where did you ship the bike from? Uh, I shipped it out of Miami, Florida. Okay, cool. And then shipped it over to Amsterdam. Okay, cool. And, and how, how long started... did it take to get there? Uh, not long. Once oh, I cool. once the bike left, or, or sorry, once I once I dropped the bike off at customs yep. in Miami, I picked it up about two weeks later in Amsterdam. Oh, cool. Amazing. Yeah, it was pretty quick. Mm. But I shipped it over via air freight. I didn't put it on a boat. Okay. I shipped it over on an airplane, which was pretty damn expensive, but yeah. it was quick. You yeah, it's fast. Yeah, otherwise it's like three months, isn't it? Like if if you stick uh, on yeah. if you stick on a boat, right? Yeah, it takes a long yeah. time, mm-hmm. and I wasn't willing to wait around that long. Yeah, set off from Amsterdam. Um, did a lot of zigzagging around Europe. Uh, through a lot of stuff that I've done before because I've I've traveled on a, on that chopper actually through Europe in the past. Um, cool. So it was kind of like reconnecting with friends along the way that I met there yep. before. Um, exploring new routes and new places that I hadn't been before. Um, the only real goal in Europe was to get to Baca de Roca, which is the westernmost point of Europe, right yeah. outside of Lisbon, Portugal. Right. So that was, the, that was like the only goal. I was like, I have yeah. to get there because that'll be kind of the starting point. Yeah. Um, and then from there, the only other goal was to make it to Magadan. Sure. And everything in between was just make it up along the way didn't really matter but that's crazy and then so i was yeah zigzagged around um you know beer poot with the rogues yeah see so i stayed with him when i flew over Mm -hmm. um and he helped like he picked me up from the airport and got me over my bike when it was ready to pick up and of course he puts on that show every year Cool. Uh, that chopper show so i ended up back actually actually ended up looping back north after portugal Oh, I went right, back okay. for that cool. show and then kind of restarted and sort of zigzagged across Germany and the Czech Republic and Austria, Switzerland, Italy. Um, Crazy. And then worked my way over into uh, the Balkan countries, you know, Slovenia, Croatia, Bosnia, yeah. Bulgaria, all those in there. And then ventured into Turkey and into Georgia and the ah. north into Russia and keep on cruising man it's just yeah. like... and were you alone yeah yeah i was alone crazy um yeah. the only time i had a riding buddy was uh at the very end of the trip so yeah. the last maybe 1500 or 1800 miles um i linked up with a guy from crimea and is that so when you missed guy. the boat the only ship out of uh vladivostok so right to get the bike out of Russia, I had to ship it from Magadan to Vladivostok, right. and then Vladivostok to South Korea, and then South Shit. Korea to Mexico. But they only ship out of Vladivostok every three weeks. Okay. But I met up. Uh, I'm, this is a guy that I met. Um, I met him in Krasnoyarsk, actually. Okay. And he, like I said, he's fr- coming from Crimea. Yep. And he was on this like tiny little Russian-built two-stroke Ege. Um, IZH, yeah, is the name of that brand. It's Ege Jupiter Five or something, right? Cool. And uh, he had rigged up this homemade trailer that he had built out of a sidecar, Shit. and uh, it was a riot, man. So I, I I met him and I met him briefly in Krasnyarsk at this bike post, which is basically like a hostel for traveling motorcyclists, right? And uh, they have those all across Russia. It's a phenomenal setup that they have. Yeah. Um, I met him real briefly and uh, I had kind of overheard that he was going to Magadan and right. uh, so I kind of like put that at the back of my head I'm like who is that dude like yeah. I'm like he's going to Magadan shit that's where I'm going Yeah. and like I, and I really didn't want to ride the road of bones by myself Yeah. like I'm like more than willing to ride pretty much anywhere alone but the prospect of doing that road by myself kind of made me a little bit uncomfortable. Like, man, totally. It feels like, that feels like one I should like, if, if I have the opportunity to ride with somebody, I should take it, you yeah. know? Yeah. Cause yeah. you never know what's going to happen out there. You're so, you're so remote. Like you're, you're on your own. If, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Totally. Yeah. If you break down or run out of gas or who knows what, like you're, yeah. you're stuck. Yeah. Um. So I, I got his phone number from somebody else. 
because uh, he kind of bailed before I had a chance to really like talk to him. And they're like, yeah, he's headed to Magadan. He's headed to Magadan. I'm like, man, I gotta, I gotta meet up with this dude. Like, uh, so I got his number and reached out to him and I'm like, and this is like a few days later, like I'd already packed up and started moving, moving East. And we were, we were sort of leapfrogging each other a little bit. And right. uh, he's like, yeah, I'm going. I'm like, well, do you want to ride in buddy? He's like, I'd love one because yeah. I don't want to do it alone either. Awesome. Like, Perfect. And uh, we were kind of like, like a, a match made in heaven a little bit. Cause you know, I'm on my chopper of course, which is no business being on that road. Yeah. You know, that like it is <laughs> like the polar opposite bike anybody should ever take to the road of bones. And uh and kind of the same with his. Like, yeah. His bike really had no business being there either. It, what size of motor was day, it? Oh god, it was three hundred CC maybe. Yeah, like little that's crazy. Shit. Well, two stroke, just spitting out blue smoke the entire crazy. time. I mean, <laughs> and uh I'm like, this is perfect because he's got this ridiculous setup an underpowered bike pulling this homemade trailer like yeah he has no business being out there i have no business <laughs> being out there so let's do it together you know because yeah, cool. we're both mo- we're both moving super slow yeah you know we're both like just crawling down the road you can't maintain any sort of speed and uh so it was perfect it was perfect and um we're we we're joking kind of the whole way he started saying things like he's like it's perfect because i my bike has no quality and your bike has no suspension. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Cause he knows his bike's a piece of junk. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> and uh, the only reason why he was even out there, uh, which is just kind of added to the, the humor of it. You know, I was doing it for the challenge. I wanted to yeah. see if it could be done. Like yeah. I wanted to see if you can get a chopper down this road. Yeah. Man. And I, I left Yakutsk, which is the start of the road of bones knowing full well that there was a good chance that either I wouldn't make it or I'd have to turn around and backtrack like 4,000 miles. And uh, so I knew that going in. I'm like, I might not make this. I have no idea what's going to happen. This is a really fucking terrible idea, yeah. but I'm going to do this anyway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, and you know, you know, on the, um, the long way around, you know, like they hit like these rivers and stuff. Did you hit anything like that or we did? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we hit river crossings and bridges that were like just wood, handmade looking bridges and the whole thing. I mean, it has been improved slightly since they did it. Yeah. Um, but there's plenty of sections that are almost unrideable. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's fucking so yeah we just we just do we just limped along for seven days we just crawled our way down that road at like 15 miles an hour 20 miles an hour really barely barely make it at like yeah you know take turns breaking down fix our bikes and keep yeah. going it's fucking crazy <laughs> but yeah. we had a blast we had so much fun and so we still stay that? in touch so it said that it took seven days to get to Magadan. yeah yeah, yeah. once we left yakutsk it took yeah. seven days. Um, uh, it was 1,250 miles. So wow. what is that in kilometers? About 2,000 kilometers. Right. Um, uh, so, yeah, we were only doing like 200 miles a day. Yeah. And it and, would and take like all day to do it. What makes it so unrideable? What What is, do you know what I mean? It's 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 like the ever-changing conditions of it. Yeah. Um, you know, you'd, you'd have two miles of like super deep sand where you're just kind right. of both feet down and kind of skiing through it. You're like, yeah. you know, just hanging on to the bike. Yeah. And then it would turn in like these like big chunky rocks and it Shit. feels like you're going through like a riverbed and wow. that would last for, tw- for fucking 20 miles. Holy shit. And then it'd be like washboard, like spine shattering washboards. Boom, 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 boom. That's crazy. And then like, and then like, you know, then you hit a section where it's nice. And yeah. all of a sudden you're doing like 25, 30 miles an hour, which felt like you're flying yeah. at that point, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Like, yeah. dude, in seven days, I think I got into third gear maybe twice. Really? You're like first and second gear the entire time. <laughs> That's as fast as you can go. And, and, and that, that must hit... have taken its toll on your body as well. That must have been oh fucking my God, hard, dude. Brutal. That big heavy bike. Yeah. Yeah. You're just wrestling it the whole time. Like it would have yeah. been easy, easier for your friend. Yeah. Have yeah. Like, yeah. In some ways, because yeah. he at least had suspension, you know, yeah, but, yeah. but at the same time, he's having to wrestle the weight of the trailer. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. So like he's got his own battle going on. <laughs> <laughs> what was in the trailer? What, like just everything, dude. Everything, <laughs> man. It was like, oh my god, dude. He he opened that thing up, and I'm like, what do you? Why are you carrying all this? <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> Shit. But it ended up being kind of awesome because then it was like, well, hell, I'm just going to throw my food in your trailer then. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> like, like, man, you got tons of room. Yeah. <laughs> so it kind of worked out. That's cool. <laughs> kind of made things easier for sure. And then, yeah, then muddy sections, everything. Like yeah. you had 10 miles of mud and you're just mud Shit. packed, everything covered in mud. Yeah. Fuck. And so from Magadan, what, what, what happened there? Did you ship the bike out of there or did you have to... Yeah, shipped it out of there. So okay, from cool. there, I shipped it uh, to Mexico. Yeah, because of all the sanctions against Russia, like you can't. There's very few places you can ship anything to. Right. Uh, right. And Mexico was really my only option. Right. Um, to get it back in back in North America. Yeah. Um. Which is fine. I've been to Mexico plenty of times. Yeah. Um. No, but no big deal. Um. So I shipped it there, and then that kind of turned into a big fiasco. Uh total nightmare trying to get it through customs and back into my hands right. um which is which is why i ended up being down there for a month um but then once i got it once i got it uh it was just basically reassemble it because i had to take it apart i've seen it in the box it's it's fucking crazy it's it's totally yeah yeah yeah, yeah so i just had to pull the front end off um yeah. and it did you know some other things to get it ready for shipping but yeah uh so, you know, pick up the crate, this big box, yeah. and then four or five hours later, had it all put back together. And then got up the next morning, and I was back in, back home in Colorado in like four days. Just, yeah, at that point, I was like, the sightseeing's over, I just want to get home. Yeah, 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 totally. <laughs> so oh, It can't be cheap doing yeah. what you do. <clears throat> no, it isn't. Um, it's, in some ways it is, in some ways it isn't. Like this last particular trip... Um, like the the shipping cost yeah. was the bulk of what I spent money on. Yeah. Um, fuel cost in Europe, as you know, was pretty damn expensive. Yeah, man. Um, yeah. Um, once you leave Western Europe, fuel gets cheap. Okay. Um, yeah. Food is pretty cheap. I don't go to extravagant restaurants. Uh, yeah. I camp a lot, so that's cheap. Um, yeah. And then you just, you know, couch surfing, stay with people, yeah. that kind of thing. Uh, I don't tend to stay in super nice hotels on a, on occasion, maybe like if I'm somewhere, a town that I really want to see and I mm -hmm. want it to be super convenient, yeah. I'll get a hotel in town center. Okay. Um, and sometimes you got to pay a little more to find a place that has secure parking or parking garage. Cause I'm really particular about where I park the bike overnight. Yeah, of course. Um, so on occasion, you know, like when I was in Istanbul, that yeah. was kind of ex an expensive few days. Yeah, but I was like, I'm not going to go to Istanbul without having a few days to just walk around. Yeah. So I found a place in town center, uh, just parked the bike for like three days and just walked walked around. Sick. Um, but then everything in between is just camping, whatever. Um, awesome. And I don't tend to go to go to a lot of big cities either. Mm -hmm. That's the other part. Um, I don't. I'm not drawn to them. I, I'm more drawn to the small villages. Then you see in the real, you see in the country, then, aren't you? The actual, yeah, you know, it's you're kind not, of yeah. Far, far, far more interesting. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but getting back to your question, um, <clears throat> so I, I owned my own business for about 20 years. Yeah. And in a lot of ways, I just feel lucky that it was a really mm -hmm. successful business. Cool. Um, did yeah. well. Yeah. And then, um, so then I started uh, buying real estate. Oh, cool. uh, started buying houses here in the town that I live in. Yeah. And, um, and so now basically I'm a landlord. Sick. And so the income from that pays yep. for the travel. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And so when, when you, when you're doing like, um, that massive trip, <clears throat> do you have any sort of like team? Well, you know what I mean? yeah, you got any, you, are you just, just doing, just going for it? Is it just you, just you and your yeah, credit I'm just, card and your just phone going and for it. it? Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. There's no support team of any, any sort. No, no. Um, <clears throat> uh, the closest I have to support is I have some companies that hook me up with parts as cool. I need them. 
Yeah. Um, so like before this one, knowing where I was going, I took far more parts than I normally yeah. do. Yeah. Um, like I wouldn't normally carry voltage regulator and a complete yeah. charging system and ignition modules and stuff like that. I wouldn't bother, yeah. but this trip I did. Yeah. Man. So, you know, I go to them and I'm like, Hey, here's what I'm, here's where I'm headed. Yeah. Can you hook me up with one like new parts? So I start fresh. Yeah. And spares. <laughs> I need two complete charging systems. I need yeah. two ignition modules, you know, and everything else. That's cool. But That's if I were I... like, had I stayed in Western Europe, I wouldn't have bothered with any of that. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, you course. can find that stuff, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, what do they hook you up for that? Um, they uh, basically just in trade for, you know, the occasional shout out on social yeah. media or something. Yeah. Because yeah, you've got, yeah. you've got a really good Instagram, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. For whatever, for whatever reason, people seem interested in following some, some yokel uh, yes. wandering around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you're, you're like, you're living the dream on you. You're doing what, like the, the amount of people that will just live through your fucking social media, you know, it's. Yeah, it's interesting, you know, because like 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 most people, it's like I never got on social media to do anything no. really with it. Yeah. I was like, I don't know. It's what people do. They get an Instagram account and they post pictures. And so one day I started doing that. And uh and I just I share what I'm doing. Yeah. And that's where it's where that's where it ends. Yeah. Like there's no like you're doing cool trying shit, to do- though. There's no like trying to be an influencer or not trying to make yeah, money yeah. at it. It's just like, here's what I'm doing. Like yeah, if people think it's cool and want to follow, cool. If not, yeah. whatever. I'm going to keep doing it no matter what. Like I do it because I love it. Not because yeah. I'm trying to get a Instagram following. Totally. <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah, to- and that, that'll <laughs> be like a massive draw for people. Cause it's real. Yeah. I-, I was just speaking to Terry Shanks about this and that, you know, he was saying that people are starving for something real right now, you know? Right. And yeah. I agree. I totally agree. You know, it's, yeah. Well, we live in a world that's, we're kind of surrounded by a bunch of BS half the time. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. yeah Every, every, to everyone's of... after that blue tick. Right. Right. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Because, yeah. It, because it gives them street cred or something. I don't even know. Yeah. But like they think it'll make that? them happy. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, speaking about your Instagram, the uh, roads are for journeys. Yeah. What's so that? that's something my wife and I started. And then, of course, you know, we had the website too. Um, and we started that. And admittedly, um, it's been kind of a slow start. We haven't probably put as much work into it as we should. Okay. Um, but the idea behind it, you know, we charge 12 bucks per year. To access all the all the articles we, and there are some free articles on there too um but it's not it was never intended to be like our blog where we yeah. shared just our stories the idea behind it is to share stories from other people yeah um and and not just motorcycling like we'd love to get the stories of people doing big backpacking trips or bicycle touring or whatever it is because yeah. we find all that interesting and it's all really neat and it's a great way to travel. Um, so in a perfect world, what we'd like to see is uh, enough contributors to the website mm-hmm. and enough subscribers so that we can put that money back to the people writing these articles and doing the travels awesome. as a way to help fund their adventures, basically. Yeah, awesome. um, it's not like, we're doing it to make money as a profit. Yeah. Um, the intention is basically just give that $12 subscription back to somebody else who's out on the road right now and try That's to put gas awesome. in their tank or buy a new pair of hiking boots, whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> so. No, that's fucking awesome. Yeah. That's kind of the idea. Yeah. Have you got any, um, any big trips planned apart from Mexico when your <clears throat> wife goes to work? Yeah, that'll be yeah, that'll be kind of a that'll be kind of a quick one, maybe a week yeah. or two. Um, nothing big. I think this summer is gonna be kind of packed full of a bunch of small stuff, to be honest. Cool. Um our next planned bigger scale adventure, I would say, is actually not even motorcycling. Um we're gonna go to uh climb Kilimanjaro in December. Oh, sick. 
Awesome. Yeah. My cousin's done that. Yeah. Has he? Awesome. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So we're looking forward to that. Um, but I think this year is going to be just kind of packed full of a bunch of small stuff. Are you doing many and shows? Then, I don't know. Maybe. Do, do you know what? I saw, I seen a picture of the um, Mama Tried show. And oh, I, yeah. I, I loved like all the show bikes. Uh-huh. And then, <laughs> <laughs> I love yeah. it, and then you're like, and they're just a real fucking used chopper. But not that they're not yeah. real choppers, but you know what I mean. Like, yeah, it, yeah. Just the some, the just contrast crusty, was, oh, yeah, yeah just, I loved it. Yeah. Just some crusty machine cranking in a bunch <laughs> yeah. of polish, po- an ocean of polished chrome. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> totally. I'm also probably the only one that dropped my motorcycle in there too. Oh, really? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> With the- with the bush there, because they they uh when you walk in they have you go through basically basically a photo booth and they take yeah. pictures of all the bikes. So I push my bike in and I go to push it back out and my foot slipped on that wood floor and a bike uh, falls over. Yeah. And it's like looking around like, oh crap, who saw that? <laughs> <laughs> you could drop a bike and you could drop it on your leg. Your leg could snap in half, but. All you care about is like, fuck, who's just seen this? <laughs> right. <laughs> I was supposed over. to be the guy, the world travel guy who knows that bike inside and out. I'm the and I'm the yeah. one who drops it. Like, yeah. oh, man. <laughs> I, I dropped this bike on Magadan, so fuck off. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> Bike's been dropped everywhere in the world. Yeah, totally. <laughs> how did that bike start then? Like what what how what what is it? How did it begin? Uh, so I bought that bike about 17 years ago yeah. and, uh, it was basically a stock 2003 heritage soft tail. Yeah. Uh, hundredth anniversary. We know there's billions of them out there. Yep. Um, so just a standard little yeah. Harley touring bike basically. Um, but as I suspect, you probably know those bikes are kind of a dime a dozen. Yeah. Boring. Yeah, yeah, Not really yeah. that cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, and I've always had a thing for choppers, so I I knew that my bike was going to get chopped. So, did you? I mean, how how long have you had that front end? Uh, the front end's been on there for about eleven years. Right, cool. How long is it? Yeah, it's uh, the bike is ten foot four inches. <laughs> that the front end is th- those legs are five feet long. That's crazy. Yeah, it's long. Fucking love you in Sweden. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Awesome. Yeah, and and it was kind of a big experiment, like on that front end. We didn't know if it worked. We're like, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Let's just build it and see what happens. And fuck, man, we're great. It fucking works. <laughs> it <laughs> it works. To like, yeah, <laughs> like if it can survive yeah. that, it can survive anything. And and the, so does that bike literally have 260,000 miles on that motor? Yeah, yeah. The motor's been rebuilt. Okay, but yeah. It's yeah. the original it's the original motor, the but original. it has been rebuilt. Yeah. Shit. Yeah, I've never I've never replaced the jugs or the cases or anything. I've always just I've always wanted to keep it as original as possible. Yeah. So every time it's been rebuilt, people are always like, ah man, just go buy like a new top end, like new jugs or something. And I'm like, man, no, I wanna Yeah. Oh God, like I like all the little dings and dents and chips yeah. in the fins and like I like all that because like, that's where the story is. Totally, and that bike is the definition of being your bike. You know, yeah, like, like that. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty yeah. unmistakable. <laughs> yeah, totally. It's crazy. So, like, I mean, how did the transition go? What What did you do first when you, you know, so you bought the yeah, heritage and then I, I mean, I mean, you know, first things first, you started kind of stripping off all the BS, all the crap you don't need, right? Yeah, and uh. You know, you can drop, you know, 50 pounds worth of unnecessary crap off it. Um, and then uh, from there, uh, cut the neck, raked it, and hardtailed it. Um, you know, those soft tail frames are kind of garbage. You yeah. know, it's not like they ever really rode that well anyway. Yeah. Um, Did so you do all that work yourself? Wasn't... No, I have a buddy of mine locally here who's a really good fabricator. Awesome. Um, so I took it to him. I was like, Here, here's what I want. Yeah. And uh, he just kind of made it happen. Um, I'm a, I'm a pretty decent mechanic, yeah. I'm not a, but I'm not a fabricator. Okay. Cool. Um, so l- l- I'm lucky that I have friends who are. Yeah. Um, and so <clears throat> actually, so when I originally chopped that thing, 
I, I put an 18 over uh, telescope in front end on it. Okay, cool. And it sat really nice. It looked really good. Like the frame rails were nice and level and it, man, it looked really good. Yeah. But dude, it rode so bad. <laughs> it was just brutal. And yeah. uh, ironically, like I built it or cut it or chopped it. And uh, that summer, I was like, like right after I finished it, you know, like yeah. two weeks after it was done, I was like, all right, I'm going to go do all 48 states, all the lower 48 states in the U S over the course of the summer. Yeah. So I did like 30, like 35,000 miles that summer in like five Shit. months. This is zigzag all over the country, hit every state and just zigzag everywhere. And it was brutal, man. Oh dude, that thing rode so bad. It was yeah, just yeah. horrible. And uh, because that front end is raked so far, yeah, that it didn't telescope, it didn't function yeah, as a yeah. suspension, yeah. But it was also so rigid that it also didn't flex, didn't do right. anything. So right. it, got, it was like truly rigid front and rear. Shit. And uh, so after that, I went back to my buddy. I was like, dude, this doesn't like, work. Something, <laughs> something's got to give, man. We yeah, yeah. Do something. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that again. <laughs> yeah. So then it was like the options were, I was like, I could try a Springer front end yeah. or go with a, a rigid front end, but longer. And uh, knowing myself, a rigid or a Springer was a bad idea. I'm like, I'm not going to maintain that thing, man. It's just going to be yeah. falling apart all the time. I'm not going to take care of it. And uh, so I was like, let's go rigid. Like I don't have to do any maintenance on that. So he comes over with these five foot lengths of steel tubing. I feel really and, stupid uh, for not realizing that they're rigid. Yeah, yeah, it's I've, rigid. I've looked at this bike a million times, and I've never... <laughs> Shit. They're totally rigid. Fuck. Okay, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that's crazy. Fuck. Cool. So, so yeah, so he goes, he gets these five-foot lengths of steel tubing. Yeah. He's like, well, let me come over, and we'll put the bike on a lift. We'll kind of start, like, eyeballing it and seeing, like, how much of this tubing we want to cut off. Yeah. and see how long we want to make these. I'm like, yeah, cool. So he comes over, we're just messing in the garage. And uh, we're like, I don't know, we could cut like a foot off it. We're like playing with like where it's going to set the frame, you know, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, finally, it was all said and done. I was like, dude, screw it. Like, don't cut anything off. Yeah, yeah. Let's just run a full length. <laughs> he kind of looks, he kind of looks at me like, are you out of your mind? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh like, yeah let's do it yeah <laughs> like i don't know what's gonna happen let's try it <laughs> that makes that trip even fucking crazier now just total rigid <laughs> fucking front and back that's crazy <laughs> yeah yeah and it works yeah. man it works yeah so i mean how so so it may, does it have like a decent amount of flex in it it does yeah right, cool. dude it rides it rides Shit. a million times better than it ever did with that telescope in front end that's so sick man so much oh, better yeah <laughs> and, and as well, you've got like one of the more reliable motors in it. Yeah, the twin cam. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's fucking, I love that motor. That thing will and just it's go funny because you know when go. I when I first when I first built that when I, or when I first chopped it, you know, um, man, that was a long time ago. And yeah. so the twin cam was like still the newest motor that they had. They hadn't come out yeah. from Milwaukee yet. Yeah, it was still the newest thing. And um, so guys were kind of looking at me like, why would you chop a twin cam? Yeah. Like, why would you do that? Like, why would you build like a shovel or a pan or yeah, something yeah. cool? You know. Yeah. <laughs> like twin cam was, <laughs> at the time, it was like super boring, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, and it's funny because people would walk over to the bike and they'd be like, "Dude, cool chopper." And then they'd be like, "Oh, it's a twin cam." <laughs> <sighs> and they just and they just like walk away like it's like the most uncool thing they'd ever seen. Dicks. And uh, I know, like, you asshole. You know, yeah. what a jerk. I'll just be the fucking Magadan. <laughs> right. Well, that was then. Yeah. Now, yeah, now it's yeah, a different yeah. story because yeah. now it's a newer, or now it's an older motor. But, of course. But at the time, it was like, why would you do that to a twin cam? Yeah. And of course, my mentality is because I can run the shit out of it. I can do 35,000 miles in five months and not touch it. Yeah. Like, it, it's it'll awesome. Just eat miles. Yeah, I can yeah. do 90 miles an hour all day long and it won't phase it. Yeah, man. And uh and so now, of course, you know, years and years later, mm -hmm. now, now you see guys building twin camp choppers all over the place. Yeah. 
yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but you were the fucking original. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I knew my day would come. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm finally cool. <laughs> Man, it, it, it is cool as fuck. Like, yeah, it's great. I mean, when you're doing these massive long trips, how, see, I struggle with that because I've got like, yeah. before people were, you know, everybody was labeling themselves and all that shit. Like, I, I genuinely got a bad case of ADD. So okay. I, fi- I find it very, very hard to concentrate on one thing for an expense. Ex- you know what I mean? So I love, I love my, I love bikes. I fucking, I love riding, but like, Doing a really doing a trip as long as you do on my own, that that would be difficult, you know. I'd be like closing my eyes on the highway to see how long I can do it, and you know, like yeah, yeah. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> how, how, how do you? How it's do a bad you... idea. Don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, it, it gets dangerous. <laughs> but um, yeah, like, do you, can you just fucking switch off? Can you? I mean, because that's not like it's not just a day. You're going for fucking months and. Oh, months and months and months. Yeah. yeah. Um, man. Yeah. You know, I was talking to somebody about this yesterday, kind of the same thing, actually. Um, like, yeah, there are definitely times where you're like not necessarily having fun or, yeah. or you're just bored. You're like, yeah. Oh my God, like another day of just grinding miles. And yeah. And uh, I, it's interesting. Cause I found like over the years, the more I've done this, um, the, like the less I do in a day, you okay. know, 20 something years ago, you know, 20 something years ago, when I first started doing all like long range travel stuff, it was like, yeah, I want to do like 500 miles every day. Yeah. And I want to like just crush miles and go see everything. And now it's like, I don't know, we do 150, 200. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds you know, nice. And, yeah. <laughs> and take like all day to do it. Yeah, man. And just stopping constantly and yeah, checking things out. And so I've I've gotten like a little lazy, actually. Yeah, yeah but yeah, um, it's more enjoyable, I think, that 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 way. Way more enjoyable. Because yeah. yeah. you know, it's like it gets old, like setting your alarm clock and be like, okay, I want to be on the road at 7 a.m. Yeah. and I'm gonna ride until dark. It's like that sounds yeah. terrible. Yeah. Like I want to sleep in. <laughs> yeah, totally. Like, get some coffee. Yeah. And... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally, totally. And and, and like yeah. pe- people are like, you know, it's, it's about the ride. It's about you know. It's like for me, those stops are just as important as the ride. Like that, that ju- like the craziest or the funniest shit happens on those yeah. stops. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's yeah, yeah. Well, and the other thing too is that um, you know, at least for me personally. I do this to see things. Yeah. I do this to go explore the U S or travel the world and see new places, meet new people. That's, that's what it is. I love the riding. Of course, I love the motorcycle and the motorcycling and the culture and all that that comes with it. But more than anything, I love the traveling and I love seeing new landscapes and architecture and the food and everything else. Yeah, totally. And, and when you're just banging out those big miles every day, like you miss out on that. Yeah. And for me, it kind of defeats the purpose, yeah, you man. know, and like, well, what are we doing yeah, then? Totally. Like, if we're just jamming miles all day, like I can do that anywhere in the world. Yeah. Like I don't have to ship my bike halfway around the world. So it's like, it's good to like, remember why we do this. Like we yeah. do this to see things and experience life and different cultures. And yeah, man. So, and, you, and you have to slow down to do that. Yeah, totally. It is. I know. It took me a long time to figure that out. Yeah, it, it, it's it's just the vehicle, like literally the vehicle. But you know, it, it's just the vehicle to 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 everything else, like you say, to food. Oh, that's travel, all it is. To, to, to meeting, yeah, crazy people you'd never meet if you didn't right. jump on that bike. Like, yeah, yeah. And the fun thing about um, you know, riding choppers, as you know, like the, they they get people's attention. Yeah, and uh which sometimes can be like a little annoying, but I can't tell you how many times it's opened up a really cool conversation with somebody that you would, never that led to something else to. and something else. So totally. yeah. Yeah. Totally. Cause they want to come over and check out the bike. So it's, it's cool. So it, it, it's uh, you mentioned food. Is that a big thing yeah. for you when you're traveling? Are you a foodie? Um, you like? No, nah, I wouldn't call myself a foodie. Um, no. no. Um, you know, my favorite food stops are like the roadside 
yeah. uh, little shacks. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're cool. my favorite. Like, very rarely will I go into an actual restaurant. Right, cool. Um, it's almost exclusively food trucks, some roadside shanty with, with you know, one dude just cooking whatever. I find find those, I always find the food to be really good. because Yeah, they're, they're oftentimes like a hidden gem, aren't they? Yeah, and yeah. and they're always really authentic because it's yeah. just some local guy cooking cooking what he knows. Yeah, and um, where you go into a restaurant, and then all of a sudden they feel the need to like make it fancy and put some like you yeah. know fusion twist on it. Like, yeah, I don't want that. Like, I'm in Albania. I want to eat what the Albanians are eating. If you stop at a roadside stand, that's what you'll get. So, You're gonna get Albanian food because that's where the locals go. What do they eat in Albania? Dude, I don't even know. I said that. I'm like, what? I don't even. <laughs> it's hard to it's hard to keep track of all this. <laughs> I feel like I feel like I feel like that's where I started to get into the pierogies because I feel like once I got into like the South Balkans, all of a sudden it was like pierogies. Yeah. And I don't think I had anything but a pierogi, and uh, uh, uh I want to call them momos. Um. Like dumplings, like a dumpling. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I had pretty much pierogies and dumplings until I got back to Mexico. Because <laughs> that's like the bulk of what they eat. It seems like, but I think they're they're easy, they're cheap, and they keep well. Yeah, man. You know, you like throw it in a bag and you eat it three hours later. And you don't drink, do you? No, I haven't yeah. drank in like eleven years. Yeah. Yeah, man. That that's like uh, I've said it a couple of times now on the episodes, but that seems to be like a common kind of. It's like a pattern that's arising now, especially in guys who are riding choppers for some reason. Like a lot of the chopper I, guys are going fucking sober and getting healthy and shit. And I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm doing it myself. I'm, yeah. Dude, it's, and it's super weird because it, yeah. it kind of goes against the culture, right? Totally. Yeah. yeah. Um, Because it's usually such a party scene, booze, yeah. drugs, yeah. you know, the whole thing. And dude, believe me, like I've been there, done that. Yeah. Uh, Drank all the booze and did all the drugs. And yeah, yeah. all the time mm. and at the same time and it's like and so i like i think like you mentioned like darren mckay like he's sober um there's plenty of other guys that are too and i think for a lot of us you know we're also a bit older you know we're yeah. well into our 40s now or even 50s and um and i think you just reach a certain point where you're just kind of like kind of over it yeah totally. like i'm just i'm sick of going to a party and waking up the next morning and trying to get home hung over like oh yeah. and you feel like hell yeah well that's and, why i brought uh, it up that it must help when you're traveling you know that you you never got a fucking hangover or whatever you know yeah um and you're so much more clear-headed and you're more aware of your surroundings as well yeah. and i actually think too um that it's safer um Definitely. because like because you know i mean you're going into areas especially when you're by yourself like you, you never yep. You do your best to educate yourself on where you should and shouldn't go. You never really know until you get there. Yeah, totally. And the last thing you want to find yourself doing is being at some bar, blackout drunk at one in the morning. Yeah. And all the locals are blackout drunk, and all of a sudden everyone's getting fired up. And totally. That's when shit happens, you know? Yeah, totally. Yeah. So there's kind of a safety aspect to it, too. Of keeping your wits about you because some people can walk into that bar and have two beers and leave like yeah. i'm not that guy like i'm the guy who's going to be in there having 12 beers yeah and then ask the bartender where to find drugs yep. and then like the party just won't end yeah totally no off button <laughs> yeah no there's no off switch <laughs> which is why i had yeah. to quit <laughs> yeah same exact same yeah so i mean it, it's it's it must be a bit uh, like a double-edged sword that your your wife is. Does she work away a lot, or I mean, you get lots her, of time her, to do your own thing, you know? But yeah, we we do get a lot of time together to travel cool. together. Um, yeah. but it definitely does pull her away a lot. For example, yeah. she's leaving in two weeks. She's leaving to be gone for a month, right? So like all of May, she'll be out in Virginia. Yeah. Um. So, you know, I'll probably head down to Mexico for the El Diablo run. Yes. You know, that's the so fucking life. Like... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to yeah. start leaving like military leaflets under my wife's pillow. Like, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. 
Hey, babe, have you ever considered idea. joining the military? <laughs> it's just an idea. I'm not, I'm not pushing you. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It was like a recruiter knocking at the door. Like. <laughs> Setting up a meeting. <laughs> yeah. No, but no, I, I really want to do the EDR one day. Uh, I think, it, yeah, I think cool next event. year I'm going to get over for it. Awesome. Well, you have to wait two years because they, they only do it every other year. Oh, really? Okay, cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, so either either be here in three weeks or Man. in two years. I keep I, I keep I keep entering like American um like rap, chopper raffles, you know, like all the oh three, yeah three G Nook and everyone. I, I enter them all the time because I'm like, if I've got a bike over there, right, I can, I can just jump on a plane and do it. Well, you've got a place to stay in Colorado. And if you ever come to Colorado, we'll find you a bike. So oh, you don't amazing. need to worry about that. I appreciate yeah. that. Sick. Yeah, that's easy. I need to try and figure out how the fuck to get there in three weeks. <laughs> Yeah, dude. Come yeah. on out. We, yeah. We'll find you a bike. Yeah, that's <laughs> not a sick. problem. Ooh. That would be. Yeah, well, cool. Yeah, I'll be riding down with a buddy and then meeting some other friends out there. How long does it take you to get from Colorado to the to the starting point? We'll probably well, we can get to the event. Um normally I would do it in like maybe four days. Wow. But I think but I think we'll probably do this in maybe three. Yeah. Maybe hustle down. A little fast for the normal, yeah. um, and then maybe take our time coming back. Cool, yeah. Hop on a plane, fl- fly into Denver. I'll come pick yeah, you up. Fucking right. <laughs> Shit, I'm really yeah. I'm gonna look into it. Yeah, that sounds cool. Good, awesome. I awesome. need to move a load of appointments, but yeah, fucking right. Cool. Um, Fuck yeah, <laughs> I live once, man. Sometimes yeah, exactly. you gotta force this stuff to happen. Just be like, like I'm doing this, and every yeah. everybody else is just gonna have to deal with it. Yeah, man. Yeah, totally. So, I mean, you must have some. You must have some <clears throat> token, amazing, crazy stories. You know. Yeah, dude. There, yeah, there's a lot of them for sure. Um, and it's almost hard to like pinpoint down like good ones. Like, but I'm really, I'm really good at getting myself into positions that I probably shouldn't be in. Yeah. You know, like. Yeah. Like, let's see, first one that comes to mind uh, is, uh, I think it was in Spain, maybe. And, you know, I stick to all these, like, tiny little two-lane back roads. I'm never on the big roads. I'm always on this, like, the smaller the road, the better, in my opinion. If I, if I can find a one-lane road, I'll take it. Yeah. And um, so I've been going through this area that was incredibly beautiful, just mm-hmm. amazing. And, like, no traffic, nobody out there. So I had the roads myself. It's perfect. I'm like, man, this is amazing. And I kept seeing these like little turnoffs with a, uh, with a sign that had a camera on it. Right. So I'm thinking like, well, th- obviously there's some sort of Vista or something up that road that they think people should go see yeah. and take a picture of. Right. Yeah. And uh, so finally I come up on one of them and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go check that out. I'm going to go up there. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> so turn off what's basically a two lane road onto, onto a one lane road. And um, it's all, it's paved. It was all tight and narrow and twisty and I keep going and going and going and then it turns to dirt and I have no problem with dirt. I've ridden plenty of dirt. Yeah, so, yeah. and I, I, I like it actually too. I think it's fun. So I'm like, cool dirt. Okay. Let's just keep going. Yeah. Well, I dude, I had no idea where this road is going or how far back this, yeah. this where I'm supposed <laughs> to stop to take a picture. I have no idea, dude. And I'm just going and going and I'm like, and then the road kind of starts like falling apart a little bit. It starts to get worse and worse. Yeah. And pretty soon it's like basically a Jeep trail. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm like, it's all point I stopped. And I'm like, what if I should keep going? I've come this like, far. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. I'm like, yeah, I've yeah. come this far. I'm like, I can't stop now. I'm like, it's yeah. got to be close. It's got to yeah. be close. And so next thing you know, I'm like hitting sections of road where I'm having to like stop and walk to find a route through it. Shit. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> so the next thing you know, I'm like busy rock crawling <laughs> this 10 foot long chopper up uh. this trail. And, uh, but I, you know, sure enough, flattens out and you get up there and uh, it's like this amazing Vista uh, and you're looking down into this Canyon with like this beautiful Crazy. river at the bottom of it. And there's nobody up there. It's just dead silent. Shit. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you can hear birds chirping a mile away and, um, wow. it's incredible. Yeah, so you yeah. stand there and you're like, man, this is amazing. I need to do you a know? burnout up here. <laughs> yeah, you should, you should do something really stupid. 
Actually, I laid down, took a nap for like half an hour in the shade. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. <laughs> I had the place to myself. I'm like, yeah, just about to take a nap. And so then, and then, then of course, you know, you're like, and then the realization hits that now you have to go back down this road. Oh and shit! And then you're yeah. like, like man, going down is always more of a pain in the neck than than going up. Yeah. Because if you lose it, you're just gonna you're just gonna keep sliding. Yeah, <laughs> you know. So I'm like bottoming out. The, I can hear the frame like smashing on rocks. Uh... Get down to the bottom. And, uh, but it was awesome, you know, and I get down to the bottom. It's funny because when I popped out back on the road that I turned off of, um, there's a couple, uh, sitting there, uh, on bicycles and they're on a big bicycle tour. Right. And so I ended up like chatting with them for a while and they're like, yeah, what's cool. up that road? So I tell them, I'm like, ah, oh, it's a road. Cool. Yeah, business. Cool. Once you get up there. Shit. Yeah. It was yeah, cool. cool. So awesome. yeah, I just like just endless stories like that, you know, like. I bet you've met some Real, crazy you know, people. Yeah, some actually crazy people. Yeah, <laughs> especially like out, out, you know, Albania, Russia, out, out those, those, they don't fuck about, you know. And I, I know no, like, I have like, R- Russian friends, and they don't fuck about. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty legit people. Yeah, 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 yeah. The the people I meet on the road the most tend to be German. Okay, I meet a lot of Germans out and about. Germans yeah. are really good about getting out there and doing stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Big time I, travelers. I used to live in Germany. Mm. Oh, did you? Cool. Yeah. yeah. Down in Bavaria. So, yeah, and they're way into the bicycle stuff too. Like nine times yeah. out of ten, if you see a, a bicycle tourist, it's gonna be a German. Right, cool. Yeah. Like I met a group, I met three three German dudes on bicycles in Turkey. Uh I was on the road right along the Black Sea. Mm-hmm. There's a coastal road road all on there. It's amazing um and i was coming up this hill and turkey is like the wild dog situation is yeah. horrible dude there's so many wild dogs out there and they're all right. mean as hell sure. uh, like they're all trying to kill you it's pretty bad <laughs> in my experience anyway yeah um but i'm coming up this road and uh, it's like this long steep incline and uh so i see these dudes on bikes and don't think anything of it. I've seen plenty of them. And I just come around them. And then almost immediately after I come around them, I see what looks like puppies in the road. Right. And there's like yeah. five or six of them. But they're not moving. They're just like laying in the road. So immediately I'm like, oh, no. Like, am I, am I about to roll up on like a puppy massacre? Like, <laughs> yeah. like the have Germans have just gone crazy. <laughs> Like I'm just pick, I'm assuming they've all been hit by a car and they're all dead. Yeah, like, of course. I'm like, yeah, oh yeah. no, you know. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, that's horrible. Yeah. So I come up real slow and I pull over, and then they all like spring up. They'll right. jump to their feet. Yeah. I'm like, oh my god, they're all alive. <laughs> and then like right as I'm doing this, like these German dudes are now like right behind me, so they stop. Yeah. So now the four of us are trying to like shoot these puppies out of the road, you know. And Shit. Here comes mom popping up out of the ditch, and luckily she was cool. She didn't attack us yeah, like yeah. I expected, but. But oh, okay. sure enough, there's three German dudes, and so we end up sitting on the side of the road talking for like half an hour. That's <laughs> cool, man. Yeah, I'm jealous, man. I, I really, <laughs> I really missed just try. Like I haven't really traveled since COVID. Yeah, just, I kind of put a damper on things. Yeah, I, I can't really. I haven't even got a reason why. It's not even. I don't. I, <laughs> yeah. I, it just kind of yeah put a damper on everything, didn't it? And just I think everyone's working now, and they're trying to fucking get back to normal and shit. But right. I, I right. need to get back out there. I'm coming out there yeah. in three weeks. Yeah, it's time. I'll yeah, see the, you. The, the, yeah, three weeks. Come out. <laughs> I go upstairs now and tell my wife, like, you're joining the army and I'm going to fucking Colorado in three weeks. So. <laughs> exactly. <yeah. laughs> Have fun at boot camp. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry about the kids. Just leave food and water. They'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, they'll be fine. That's why they make cages. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. So have you got anything you want to put out there? Not necessarily, man. I, you know, my, like my thing, I'm like, I, I always hope, you know, getting back to like the Instagram page, like I, the yep. one thing I do hope that maybe people do get out of that is a little bit of inspiration. Yeah. You know, um, again, you know, I, I think that's people, something that people need right now. Yeah. You know, I just hope when yeah. people scroll through the photos, that they can be like, yeah, this guy can do it. I can do it. Cause yeah. there's nothing special about, about me. I don't have the magic pill. Like yeah. I just, I, I, I made traveling and seeing the world a priority in my life. 
Yeah. And most everything I've done career included has been geared towards making that happen. Um, and, uh, yeah, man. I mean, if I can do it, anybody can do it. There's nothing special about me. So, it always so been, I just hope that people see that. Yeah, yeah. So I just hope people see it and be like, I want to go see that for myself. I'm going to yeah. make that happen. Like that is awesome. Yeah. Sick. What's it like that? What's yeah. it like to ride down in, in, um, in Mexico and stuff? Mexico is awesome. Yeah. Um, I've never amazing been. food. Like one place I've never been. Yeah. It's amazing food. Really good people. Yeah. Uh, just really kind people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You really have to, uh, Mexico is one, of, one of, is one of those countries where, where I feel like you really have to ignore the news on. Well, yeah, that's all we see. That's yeah. all, like the British people. Cartels. That's all, and, yeah. Yeah. They're, like, all, yeah. We, like, all we see is that the cartel are on every fucking corner, just spraying right. everyone. You know? <laughs> like, that's... Yeah. And that's all we see too. We get the same, right. the same news, you know, yeah. like it's no different here. Yeah. And, um, which is really, really unfortunate because the Mexican people are really good people. Yeah. You know, the, you find that the, a lot though, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, the scenery is amazing. Yeah. The roads are good. It's, it's a nice place to travel. Man, it's I'm, cheap. I'm going to yeah. fuck it. I'm getting over for the EDR. I'm yeah, going to, you got to do it. I'm going to make it happen. Shit. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, honestly thank you so much for coming on i really really yeah appreciate thank it. you for having me 